clouds don't need to be just in data centers. There's also a huge opportunity out there at the network edge. Chris, thanks for joining us again on Telecom TV. Thank you. Um, how is the OpenStack community tackling the opportunities and associated challenges um, of the network edge? They're embracing the challenge. We, we have a few activities and initiatives ongoing. We have the Edge Working Group, um, and that's a collective of individuals uh, who have an interest, who are running networks, who are trying to vend into networks, uh, that are looking at what do we need to achieve, what do we need to provide, how do we take uh, what has been built as a data center technology and expose the capabilities that we want in a, in a ubiquitous platform across a network out into Edge sites. Um, and so we look at things like expo uh, extending security out to the site and having consistent security mechanisms both in a data center and on, on a, a disparate set of infrastructures. Um, we look at things like how do we manage information, how do we manage uh, images and, and intellectual properties when it comes to, to integrating with these sites and, and constrained bandwidth considerations. Uh, we talk through a number of use cases, whether they be retail, whether they be telecommunications, uh, whether they be residential. Um, and, and try and figure out what are the types of behaviors that we need from a distributed control plane. How do the specific sites need to act in, in an autonomous nature or in a, in a collaborative nature with the central piece? Uh, and basically work through these types of questions, uh, have good conversations, and then engage with the OpenStack community. So in, in Vancouver, for instance, we did a number of focus sessions on Keystone, working with the security team on how can we federate and how can we delegate security concerns using the OpenStack infrastructures, um, and really starting to tackle some of those hard challenges. Uh, there is a long way to go. Um, we had a great panel on, on yesterday, uh, where a few people came up and asked, are you looking at this? Um, and when they said this, it was, it was an area that we haven't really managed to get into yet. Of course, you have to do this stage by stage. First, you get the security out there, and then you start to understand, okay, topologically, how does that security look, and how do I then apply policy uh, and enable applications to take advantage of that. So we're actually starting to work into that level now. I'm assuming that not every use case has the same uh, consistent requirements. So there's, depending on the use case, you've got different priorities, you might have certain requirements that are unique to a certain, certain use case. So how, how would you actually sort of compile all that lot and feed it back in to what's happening with, with, with OpenStack? That's challenging, um, but it, it, it tends to happen in a natural sense. Uh, this was one of the topics which came up yesterday, and that is, how do you know what control plane to deploy in what site? Um, and, and how do you know where to run your applications? And, and it really comes down to, you have to be able to map the different technologies and the different needs. Um, so we have, for instance, uh, dialogues with, with the Walmarts and, and Targets, who, who are doing you know, shopping center type of deployments. How do, they, how do they use these systems? How do they then distribute and manage? Um, and we also have you know, Beth Cohen from Verizon there talking about the residential use cases and the, and the 5G use cases and bringing those in. So we have people bringing the needs and then we try and expose that back to the community. We get a set of capabilities which those people can then take back out and apply and, and attempt to, to work with. And of course, then we just iterate. And it has to happen through iteration and it has to happen with a multi-stakeholder environment. It leads me on to orchestration um, because the, the, the the task of the CSPs is phenomenally difficult at the, at the moment. It's going to get more and more so as these networks become more agile and more flexible. Um, is, there a, is there a preferred you know, best case route or, or strategy they can adopt? Or are we kind of not floundering, but there's the, we still don't really know which is the, the optimal way to go about this? Um, I wouldn't say we're floundering. I would say we're progressing. Um, and, and again, it comes down to who are the users. If you talk to a Target or a Walmart, uh, how orchestration works is essentially how they build their business. They have a, a, a defined set of tasks that they need to get done, as challenging as they may be. Um, in the telecommunications space, it's a different challenge, whereby I'm not trying to solve my business problems, I'm trying to solve other business problems and a disparate set of business problems. Um, and there we have a much larger challenge, and that's where communities such as ONAP emerge, the collaboration amongst telecommunication industry members on operational network automation. Um, there we start to see a number of challenges being addressed, such as how do I automate my infrastructure? Uh, how do I then automate the virtualization and control plane layers that I need to, to distribute? Uh, and then how do I automate getting applications running on that? And there's a, there's a strong focus on automation, which is ideal, that's, we need that, we can't be there pressing buttons all day. 
Um, but there's also the complexity of trying to create an automated solution over a changing landscape. Uh, and that's, that's, I think, something that the ONAB community, for instance, is really driving into. Now, we've been talking about NFV for, well, it seems like, y y forever. <laughs> it's probably about five, five years or so. Um, but just as we, we're getting our heads around NFV and just as we're starting to see more development and in the right direction for, for NFV, along comes this resurgence of, of cloud native um, and the combination of the two. And over the past few months, we start talking about cloud native network functions. How does this all map and fit to, to, together? And, and, and what, what are going to be the, the, the impact for you know, the, the open source community? Good question. So, I think one of the things as a, as a, in the telecommunications sector, uh, we've been working towards network virtualization, we've been looking at edge, and, and one of the first things that you come across when you run into an edge environment where you have a constrained set of resources is virtual machines are kind of heavy and kind of hard and they kind of consume a lot of resource. Um, a container on the other hand, you can, you can spin up a lot of containers and only iteratively take a slice more resource, whereas a VM has a, has a, a complete system around it. So containers then become a really good tool to use in that context. So we start to look at, okay, maybe I'm not, not, not creating virtual network functions, maybe I'm creating container cloud native functions or whatever you want to call them. Uh, essentially what I'm doing is just choosing a different virtualization paradigm or, or, or different isolation paradigm when I'm deploying my applications. Cloud native comes with a few other opportunities. Um, uh, service meshes, um, a, a, a broad and detailed ecosystem around capabilities that can fit into a cloud native environment. Uh, so what we see is, is the, the CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, essentially providing into our ecosystem a number of opportunities that we can take advantage of, especially as we move into edge, but also to bring back to the data center. If you can make an optimization anywhere, you make it everywhere, right? So. Uh, CNCF and, and, and Cloud Native uh, has a huge impact. It has a huge impact on, on how we're going to build applications, how we're going to deploy applications, how we're going to leverage the infrastructures that we have. Uh, what the impact it has on, on OpenStack, for instance, um, we've seen a, a, a big movement from OpenStack as a, as a, as a, as a capital venture you know, uh, focus to, to the CNCF as, as a capital venture focus because there is so much opportunity. What we haven't seen is a, is, a, is a massive community movement. I mean, uh, OpenStack is still one of the three largest or most active projects on the planet today. Um, and, and what that says is, even though we're moving to cloud native, we're still using what we have as far as infrastructure as a service part to, to address the edge, um, to address how we federate and, and coordinate across multiple disparate infrastructures in, in, a, in a large environment. Uh, and then, of course, we use cloud native on top of that. Um, in, in OpenStack, there is a, a big focus now on, on what they're calling the bare metal cloud, um, <laughs> which is essentially infrastructure as a service for containers running on bare metal. Um, and, and that's just such a hot area for everyone to focus on uh, because you get the benefits of scale, you get the benefits of that, that smaller footprint, um, but you also want the benefits of a consistent security mechanism and you also want the, the, the benefits of, of consistent image management and storage solutions. So it's, it's not one or the other, it's really how do we combine both to find the best solution for the use cases that we're addressing. Chris, thanks again for making this very complicated subject a lot clearer, I appreciate that. Thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Thank you.